Hi everyone, in this video I'll be doing Advent of Code 2021, Day 11. Let's get started with the puzzles. Alright, so today's puzzles were quite fun and challenging. So let's, uh, let's just read them first, I guess. You enter a large cavern full of rare, bioluminescent Dumbo octopuses. They seem to not like Christmas lights on your submarine, so you turn them off for now. There are a hundred octopuses arranged neatly in a 10 by 10 grid. Each octopus slowly gains energy over time and then flashes brightly for a moment when its energy is full. Although your lights are off, maybe you could navigate through the cave without disrupting the octopuses if you could predict when the flashes of light will happen. So we're given the octopuses, they each have a energy level and they're updated according to these rules. First, every octopus um, has its energy level increased by one. Then any octopus that has its energy level greater than nine flashes. Then it um, influences all surrounding octopuses, so all eight, including diagonals, and makes their energy levels increase by one as well. Those octopuses, if they get an energy level greater than nine, then also flash. So um, this is what happens during a step. Every octopus can flash at most one during a step, so we don't get anything infinite during a step. Um, we are limited by the number of octopuses that can flash. So we are given this sequence of steps to do, and we need to do a hundred of these steps. And our task is to figure out how many octopuses flash, or at least how many flashes there are after a hundred steps. So they explain this example um, in quite a lot of detail, which I appreciate. And they tell us that in this example, there are 1,656 flashes. So we have to simulate this flashing and find out how many flashes there are in total. So. Interpreting this problem and simulating is probably the hardest part to do because as usual when we're dealing with grids and simultaneous updates, we have to create a new variable um, sometimes to do the update correctly and not have any corruption. So as an example, if we just updated the grid directly, so let's say we had a 9, 9, 9, 9. If we update um, all this octopi, octopuses, I don't know what I'm using here independently then suppose we all in um, first step all of them get updated to 10 right that's pretty simple um, then this first octopus has an energy level greater than 10 we reset it to zero and then we add one to all of its surrounding neighbors then these get reset to zero and add one here then this gets reset and adds one here um, but this is this is actually wrong because uh, we have to do it simultaneously. So we do have to keep a new variable that uh, helps us do simultaneous updates. So how I approached this was first parsing the input, pretty standard. I included this debug function, which is no longer necessary. Um, and then I initialize the answer to count how many flashes there are in total. And then I add a loop to just loop through all 100 steps. For every step, um, we initialize a Boolean array to keep track of which octopuses have flashed because no octopus can flash more than once. Then we just add one to all the octopuses. Um, and then we do this continuous updating because we are not going to stop until either all octopuses have flashed or no octopuses are going to flash anymore um, because we have to re repeat this second step not just uh, do it once. So we have to continu continually check if any octopuses have energy level greater than nine. Uh, what we do is we just loop through the entire array and for every octopus, if it meets the conditions of not having flashed yet during the step and having an energy level greater than nine, then we do what the step says. Basically we uh, increment our answer first because that's, that's another flash. We mark this octopus as flashed and then we go around, loop through all its neighbors, and increase their energy levels by one. How I'm doing the simultaneous updates is keeping track of this array change, which is the change in the energy level of all the octopuses during one of these sub-updates, I guess you could say. And then at the end, I'm just updating all the octopuses with their change simultaneously. Um, and then if no flashes have occurred during this step, um, or I guess if no flashes have happened um, during this sub updating, then we can continue going. So on to the next step. After that, uh, oh yeah, we do have to make sure that 
all the octopuses after a step is complete reset to zero if they used up um, their flash. So yeah, that's it for problem one. It's a, it's a lot of bookkeeping. We have to keep track of which octopuses have flashed, uh, do the simultaneous updates, and put it all in the right order. So that's what's challenging about part one, I suppose. Then for part two, we notice a very interesting phenomenon. So there's not a lot more we have to do, but we can observe that the octopuses seem to be flashing together after a certain amount of time. So they synchronize. And this is actually a very curious phenomenon. I will, let me look up something. Uh, so first up, a warning, there will be some flashing lights on screen. So skip forward a bit if you are sensitive to that. Okay, and now here we go. So we have some simulation. This is a simulation by Nikki Case, who is a uh, quite cool programmer person from Canada. Um, and we can see in the simulation, there's a bunch of fireflies similar to the octopuses, and they all have a sort of energy count, which is actually their an internal clock. And when a firefly flashes, then all nearby fireflies also flash, um, or their clocks jump forward a little bit. So that's uh, similar to the octopuses. So when we turn on that step of nudging the neighbors, you can see they do get synchronized flashing. Um, so there we go. There's a very, very interesting uh, phenomenon here, which is actually true. And there's probably also like, I bet there's like a research paper on this. Um, oh yeah, this also has to do with syncing metronomes when they're like on a thing and they synchronize together. Um, yeah, this is a very, very cool. Natural phenomena are beautiful often. So just putting out there that this octopus flashing simulation thing is not a coincidence. It's actually a real thing. Um, so for part two, we just have to find when all the octopuses flash. And this is convenient because at the very end here, we are resetting all the octopuses that have flashed back to zero. And during that loop, we can just keep track of how many octopuses have flashed during the step. And if that number is equal to all the octopuses, so that's 100, then uh, we can stop and then print out the current step we're on. So. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for day 11 of Advent of Code 2021. Hopefully you found today's puzzles interesting. I know I certainly did. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any questions or comments at all, leave them in the comments below. And I'll see you tomorrow for day 12. Thanks for watching.